Hi there, I'm Angela Fair. My channel here on YouTube is all about helping you become your own favorite artist with tips and techniques to help you grow your skills and a reminder that it is you who are the most important thing you bring to your art. Let's just dive into today's demonstration. I wanted to give you a look at a product that I was trying for the very first time, but a very ancient art supply, and that's the Japanese ink sticks that I've been given from Kuretake. Kuretake sent me a wonderful care package of uh, watercolor supplies, and these were the ones that intrigued me the most. So uh, follow along and watch as I give them a try, talk a little bit about my impression of these uh, supplies and how I might use them for my, for my artwork and, and to help me to be more creative as an artist. I've been really excited to try these art supplies from Kuretake. Unfortunately, I don't speak Japanese and uh, that can be a little bit of a hindrance uh, when it comes to knowing what exactly it is that I'm trying. Um, fortunately, I learned something new recently and I just wanted to show it to you. Um, because I don't speak Japanese, uh, I found out I can use my Google Lens to translate a box that has writing I don't understand. Um, all I did here was I just scrolled through, there's a list of different options on my Google Lens. Um, it brought up the option to translate. Um, Google Lens is smart enough that it recognized that this was Japanese. I can take a photo of the words. Um, <laughs> Google instantly uh, translates and I can see exactly what it says. So here on the screen I see it says calligraphy inkstone, um, ceramic inkstone, and Sumiki's dual roll. Uh, we also see ceramic double-sided view. So this is a calligraphy inkstone. That's what that tells us. Uh, I'm going to share, uh, we'll just, let's open it up and take a look. First of all, we have the inkstone on one side. It's very, very smooth. We don't want that side. We actually want this side that feels a little bit rough. And this is where we grind our calligraphy inks. And then inside of this box, we have the calligraphy inks themselves, the ink stones, or the the, the bricks of ink, I guess, is the better word for it. Let's make some room, take a look here. Um, we've got a little color chart here, which helps us to see the colors we have. There is a little instructory um, guide here. And <laughs> instructory, is that even a word? Um, there's a little instruction guide here, Kurotaki Saboko Shimbi. So here it's actually written in English, and we can read the instructions. Um, how to drop a coin size droplet of water, grind the ink stick in a circular motion um, when the ink becomes your preferred consistency, guide the ink toward the ink pool, this lower section of the ink stone. Uh, and then we can clean it. Um, we want to dry the ink stick before we put it away. And all the ink sticks are in this really adorable little, these little adorable wooden boxes. They're really cute. Um, I think we're going to pull out, let's take a look at the greens. I've got two greens here. And I think I want the earthier one, which according to my color chart, is that one beside the yellow. Um, inside these little wooden boxes, we have the ink stone or the ink stick. It's wrapped in a little bit of rice paper. And uh, so we are going to use that and we're going to grind some ink. I have looked at a couple of videos on the topic and I'm going to link one up in the description below the video. You can see someone who knows more than me. Uh, grinding ink. I'm going to use this little pipette to just drip a little bit of water onto my inkstone and before I start I'm going to make sure it's clean because I have tried out some other colors and I'm not always very good at cleaning up after myself. So we're going to just start with that uh, little coin size amount of water like they said and then grind in a circular motion. Um, straight up and down, you don't want it at an angle. You know it's really interesting because um, what I was seeing was this grinding process is not a speedy process. It takes time. And I, I, I'm realizing more and more that the meditative uh, preparation that I do before I paint is a really good way to start a studio painting session. So often I come into the studio and I want to get right down to the business of painting. But in my mind, I'm thinking about the problems of the day, I'm, uh, I don't know, pondering life, I'm thinking about laundry, I'm watching the clock because I don't want to, um, you know, forget about making supper for my family or whatever. And I need something to help me slow down, slow down my busy brain, calm down and just kind of find my core identity again. That's why I started making art to begin with because it really, I mean, it was such a pure way of helping me to feel 
good, to feel at peace, to relax. Um, it brought me joy. And I, I want that. I don't want to just come to the studio so that I can make a perfect painting and feel really productive. I do that in every other area of my life. So uh, grinding ink, what a good way to slow down and get thoughtful and intentional about the process. So we're getting this nice little pool of ink and as I've been um, circling around, grinding here on that little slightly rough surface, I kind of wish I had three or four ink stones so I could mix multiple colors at the same time. But um, I can feel the ink changing in consistency. It was really watery at first, and now it's getting thicker and a little more syrupy. You know, I have more ink than water, and you can feel that. So I think I'm going to stop right there, dry my ink stone, and just pretty, pretty color, and just set it over here. Ink is not the same as watercolor. Uh, that's a good thing to remember. I'm not an artist who's been trained in Sumier or uh, any kind of traditional um, watercolor technique. So, and, and for me, that's, that's actually an advantage. I want to paint my way. And I want to use these materials in a way that works for me. The paper I'm using today is Hanamula Rough. And I've just made a little sketch of some flowers. Um, the harebells are blooming out in the field near the house. And uh, they're really pretty. So I'm going to paint a little bit uh, inspired, by, inspired by them. And I'm going to use a hand, I'm going to use a handmade brush. Uh, this bamboo handled brush from Lebens and Paint Brushes. And again, all the supplies that I'm using today are linked in the description below the, vi below the video. So ink is not the same as watercolor, and so I don't want to expect it to behave in the same way. Um, I have the opportunity right now to get to know it. One thing we'll need to wait for it to dry to find out is does this ink um, re-wet re or does it um, lock onto the page when dry uh, permanently. Now I want to, I want to grind another color, but I want to save this. Um, this ink. What I think I'm going to do is just rinse it down to the bottom here. And what will happen is, adding some water, <laughs> tilt it so it flows downward. Um, adding a lot of water is not a bad thing because as it uh, evaporates, the pigment will remain. So I'm not losing anything by adding water and pooling it down below here. I'm just making space so I can grind more color up at the top. This time let's choose a blue. Um, this blue has a really pretty kind of periwinkle color, so we're going to try that. Now according to this very small amount of research that I did, uh, you get a really nice quality of ink by grinding your own. Rather than buying ink, buying, wow. Rather than buying ink that's already been ground, and it is true, you have a lot of control then over the saturation.
What I thought I would try to do with this one is rather than grinding it, I'm just going to wet it in the water. I'm going to try to use it to make some marks on my paper. Actually draw directly on the page. I want a kind of sketchy, rough mark. one that's not too con controlled. Mm, the pigment's so sunk to the bottom here, so as soon as I lifted the excess moisture, you saw the blue really come forward. Gorgeous. So far the blue is my favorite. It's just a absolutely gorgeous color. We're going to give this a chance to dry and then we're going to come back and take a look at the pigments and see how, um, how well they lock onto the paper. Here we're just going to take a minute and take a look at this now that it's dry. I really wanted to know if these ink stones, ink sticks, would um, move and uh, flow after the when they're re-wet. So we're going to start just by putting a little drop of water um, right on an area with some pigment on it. We'll put one here, put one over here where the pigment's really dark and rich. We'll just give it a little minute to settle in and then we'll try to scrub it around a bit. Most of the time with watercolor I try not to scrub too hard when I have um, layers of pigment. It's not a you know, big deal to use a gentle touch this is a good test for a new pigment just to see how much it moves uh, when it's moistened and re-wet. Uh, re so I'm just gonna lift, rub and lift a little bit. And you can see that when there's thick pigment on there, we do lift it off a bit as we dab there. So that's good to know. Um, and anytime I think you have thick pigment, you're gonna see that anyhow. But what I'm also seeing is it really does lock in quite well. As I'm rubbing over top of this wash of green, you know, we're not seeing movement there at all. So we do get that ability to layer um, quite robustly. And ink is usually like that. And that, that also gives us the ability to, of course, layer and build up um, washes of pigment. With, with um, watercolor, and with this ink, we see some transparency here that allows the paper to shine through. It allows us to build up rich layers of color as well. So that's something I love about watercolor. And it encourages me to um, enjoy using these ink sticks. And yeah, they're a lot of fun to work with. I'm not sure that they'll replace my traditional watercolor because I do really like the convenience of having watercolor fresh from the tube or squeezed into a palette. But um, with this idea of slowing down to be more intentional about painting, getting into that mindset of creativity and flow, having the ink stone and just taking that time to do that circular movement, it's very meditative. It's a really good way of getting into that flow and that slower speed that actually really it encourages creativity and creates an environment that is not about convenience or speed or efficiency. Creativity isn't any of those things. Uh, we need that openness to process and slowing down, uh, getting out of our heads a little bit. Uh, that's a really good way to get into that connected stage of flow. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this has uh, given you a bit of insight as to whether or not this would be a product you'd like to try for your own painting process. I really loved actually the black ink sticks and I could see myself using them for uh, value studies as well as for this kind of intuitive uh, painting demonstration. If you've tried these ink sticks and have some impressions to share, leave a comment below and let me know what you think of them. Uh, and if you've enjoyed this video and want to see more tips and tutorials from me, don't forget to subscribe. I try to always offer something that will help you grow as an artist and also feel encouraged wherever you're at in your art journey. We should 
can and should have a process that we love um, and lo look forward to painting whenever we get the chance. Uh, that is so much better for our growth than uh, an environment of feeling like we're not good enough or being self-critical. And uh, that's something I try to coach myself through and I'd love to encourage you in that as well. Thanks for watching. I'm Angela Fair. Bye for now.